In this video, we're going to look at the steps in constructing a simple drawing. Now, up to this point, you've been looking at your traditional uh, drafting tools and equipment, you know, like uh, triangles and uh, T-squares and parallel edges, scales, erasers, triangles, uh, lead holders and mechanical pencils and things like that. So now we're actually going to get to use them and draw with them and look at uh, some of the proper techniques in using these tools and equipment. So in this video, uh, we're going to learn how to properly tape down the drawing media to the drawing surface. We're going to learn how to properly use the scale for accurate dimensions. We're going to learn how to properly draw an accurate line segment. You're going to need some materials. You're going to need drawing media, like a piece of paper. You're going to need some drafting dots. You're going to need a T-square or a parallel bar. You're going to need a lead holder. This lead holder will have either 4H or 6H lead loaded in it. You're going to need a mechanical pencil. Mine is black, yours may be green. Color doesn't matter as long as it's a 0.5 millimeter mechanical pencil. You're going to need your scale. You're going to need a triangle. This happens to be the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then you may even need an eraser because you never know. Now in your textbook, here's the page that shows steps in constructing a simple drawing. So basically we're going to follow these steps with this demonstration. So first let's get our equipment moved off to the side. Let's get set up here. I'm going to take my piece of paper. This is an A-size sheet, which means it's 8.5 inches tall by 11 inches wide. Most of your drawings are going to be in the landscaped orientation. Here are your drafting dots. Now, the way to use these drafting dots is this. On this right side, you have a tab. This left side is where the drafting dots are dispensed. And so you can put your thumb here with light pressure. Now as you pull the tab, a drafting dot pokes out at you. So take that drafting dot, and all it is is masking tape cut in the form of a circle. And I like to place mine first in the upper left-hand corner of the sheet. I'm going to tape it down. Just don't be afraid to push it down real nice and sticky. I'm going to dispense another drafting dot. I'm going to take my parallel bar or my T-square and I like to line it up with the top edge of my sheet. Now you can line it up with the top edge or the bottom edge, whichever you would like. This is just a technique that I use and you'll see why. Now I'm going to take the drafting dot and place it in the lower right hand corner of the sheet. What this does is allow me to align the paper with the straight edge. So this is how I'm going to line up my very top edge of the paper with the top edge of my T-square or parallel bar. Now I'm going to pull just a little bit towards the lower right corner so I can make my paper nice and flat. And then as I move it down, I'm going to just go ahead and stick the dot down onto the table. Make sure these are nice and stuck down to the table. As you'll notice, my paper is nice and flat. I'm going to be moving my T-square and parallel bar you know, across the paper. I'm going to be taking my triangle and moving it around. And I want to cut down on the chance that my straight edges might catch the paper and tear it. So now I'm going to complete taping down my paper to the table by placing two more drafting dots 
on the other two corners. As I do, I'm just going to put a little pressure as I pull to make sure it's nice and flat. Get another drafting dot, place it in the remaining corner. Okay, there it is, see? Now I have a nice flat drawing surface. Set the drafting dots to the side. And now in the first step, uh, they're having us draw a light 30 degree construction line. So I'm going to take my lead holder. Remember, either 4H or 6H lead. The lead that is 4H or 6H is very hard. And so it produces very light construction lines. And that's what you want starting out. So take your 3060 triangle and your straight edge. And really, anywhere on the sheet is fine for now. Uh, if you wanted to, you could just put a dot right there. And I just randomly placed a dot on the sheet. I know you can barely see it, but it is right there. And now I'm going to line up my 3060 triangle with that dot. I'm going to line up the edge with it. And then I'm just going to draw a random light construction line at a 30 degree angle. You can see that you can barely see that line segment because it's so light. If you were to hold your paper at arm's length, you should not be able to see that line. That's how light it should be. So, the next thing that they do in the book is this. They take their scale, and now they line up with the zero with the start point. And they align the scale with the light construction line. Next, we want to put our measurement on here. Let's say that our line segment needed to be 5 inches long. So I'm going to count over on my scale 5 inches. And I'm going to make another tick mark or a dot where 5 inches is located. Now in the textbook, on step number three, they go ahead and have you align the edge of the 3060 triangle with the construction line and draw a dark line along the top edge between the two tick marks. Now, th that's fine. My experience has been that sometimes if I go ahead and darken this line segment and then continue to draw construction lines, I may discover an error later, but I've already darkened my line segment, and so guess what? It's going to be harder to erase. So what I would suggest that you do is go ahead and draw all of your line segments that are required, and then later you want to go and darken when you're completely finished laying out your light construction lines. That way, if you do discover an error, there shouldn't be a problem with you erasing these light construction lines. So what I'm going to do is deviate just a little bit from the steps in the book, and I'm going to go ahead and draw from this left start point a light horizontal construction line. So there is a very light horizontal construction line. Now the next step is to take my scale and define the length of the line segment. So I'm going to line up the dot for my start point with zero on the scale, align my scale with the construction line, and now place a dimension on here. Let's measure over, I don't know, three and a half inches and either make a tick mark or a dot right on your construction line. No, you can barely see it, but that's because everything's so light. And so what we want to do then is notice there's my three and a half inch tick mark or dot. Now what I'm going to do is complete my design or my drawing. The next thing I need is a line segment from this dot to this dot. So 
As I take my straight edge and my triangle, you may notice that, wait a second, I can't really line up those two points using my straight edge. So I'll just set it to the side and not use it at all. So what I will do, though, is to take my lead, put it right on the start point, move my triangle until it touches my lead, and now you'll notice that I can pivot my triangle around that first point or where my lead is. And that'll help me line up the other dot or the end point of the line segment that I need to draw. So let me do that. I'll line it up. And when I get it lined up, draw your very light line segment. You'll see that I have my design completed. Uh, I have my light construction lines. I have my dots in between those. And you may notice that from this dot here, I have an extra piece of a construction line. Don't worry about that. That's perfectly fine to have extra construction lines because once you darken these finished line segments, you probably won't even notice or see that light construction line anymore. So now that my design is complete, let's go back and darken the finished line segments. Next, I'll take my mechanical pencil, my 0.5 millimeter pencil. I need my straight edge again. Basically, you're going to repeat the steps that you did before and using all of your tools and equipment. I'm going to go ahead and align my 3060 triangle with the first line segment. Now you can darken in many different ways, in many different order. The one thing you want to remember is to darken from top to bottom and maybe from left to right if you're a right-handed drafter. If you're a left-handed drafter, you're probably going to darken from top to bottom and then from right to left. And I'll try to explain as I go. For instance, if I darken this line segment first, the horizontal line segment, then when I started to darken this line, this angled line segment, notice my triangle is going to be on top of this darkened one and it may smudge it. So just keep that in mind. So watch the technique. Let me darken this angle line segment first. I'm lining up my straight edge and my triangle with the construction line. And now I'm going to use my 0.5 millimeter to darken. Here we go. Now it's OK to go over this line segment two or three times to make it nice and dark. Notice I stopped at the end points. And now I have a nice dark line segment. When you do this, you'll have little graphite shavings. So I like to take my horsehair drafting brush and clean it off a little bit. The next thing I'm going to do is to darken the horizontal line segment. So I'll take my straight edge, parallel bar, T-square, line up the dots, and I'm going to draw right on top of the construction line where I made before. Make sure that I start and stop exactly at the two dots that I made earlier. Now if you'll remember, the last line segment that we created, we didn't use the straight edge, but we just used one of our triangles. So I'm going to line up the two dots. Remember, I'm going to take my, my uh, lead ho holder or my mechanical pencil and put it on one of the dots. Touch my triangle next to that, uh, that dot, and then I can line it up better using the first one as a pivot point. I can check the alignment, and once the alignment's good, I'm going to go ahead and darken. Make sure to put a lot of pressure on the triangle to hold it in place because it will move on you. It happens to me a lot. Now I've drawn my darkened line segment, and as I zoom in, you'll notice how dark the lines are. You'll notice how clean they are, 
and you'll notice that little, barely notice that light construction line. Now later, with our manual drawings, we could go make a Xerox copy of it, or in some cases a blueprint. But when we do that, these light construction lines probably won't even photocopy, or they probably won't even show up. So I, if you get those too dark, then yes, you could come back and erase those line segments. But later, as our drawings become more, um, more busy when they have more detail to them, you want to make your construction lines extremely light because it's going to take time if you have to go back and erase all those construction lines. So here's our finished product. And so if you'll remember the, the technique, first we established a start point. Then from that start point, we drew a light construction line. Then after drawing the light construction line, we took our scale and we measured the distance that we needed the line segment to be. We made a little dot on the construction line. Then we continued with that procedure to draw the rest of our construction lines of our design. Once the design was laid out very lightly, then we came back using the same technique with our tools and equipment and we took our mechanical pencil and we darkened the finished line segments making sure to start and stop at the two marks that we had made, making sure that we went, we traced over the construction line two or three times to make our line segments nice and dark. Remember, we, we darkened kind of from the top to the bottom and then left to right. This will ensure that your lines don't get smudged by the tools and equipment on top of them. So there you are. Those are the steps in constructing a simple drawing. So go ahead and do yours. You can follow along with me if you need to rewind this video and watch again. No problem with that. And we'll see you in the next video.